Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going to continue our study, Faith, the Law of Change. And after I was thinking about it, I thought, well, maybe we should call it Faith, the Law that Accesses Change. But once again, let's start with our beginning. Let's look at Genesis. We have got to be getting an image of what God has done for us. And so Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Genesis 1, 26. And God said, let us make man in our image. And so we spent some time last week talking about image. What is the image? And David referred to that even this morning. The image of God. We're made in the image of God. And Satan, our enemy, keeps bombarding us with thoughts, trying to get us to think we are to compare ourselves or to be like the world. We are made in God's image. And it doesn't matter what anybody else says, his image is in us and his likeness. If we do not see ourselves as God sees us, if we do not see ourselves identified with Jesus, if we do not see ourselves as joint heirs with Jesus, we will never operate in his likeness because we're to operate the way he did. And we will constantly be striving to try and do to get good enough to do whatever it is we're trying to do. Instead of operating the way God tells us to operate, he says, in my image, God is a speaking spirit, and he made man to be a speaking spirit like him. And let them, and in our likeness, so when we get that image of God in us, who we are, we will then be able to operate in his likeness. When we have that, we will then be able to have dominion. Without that, we will not be able to exercise dominion because we'll always be wondering if we did enough, if we're good enough, did I obey enough? And then we'll have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and every creeping thing. God created man that way. Verse 28, and God blessed them. God blessed them. God empowered them. What is the blessing? What is that empowerment? It's to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion. Fruitful, multiply, replenish. Any waste place is to be replenished. Jesus said, I am the beginning of and the end. I am the Alpha, I'm the Omega. It says that when Jesus comes, what the canker worm has stolen will be returned to you because Jesus is the beginning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. So the first commandment we have as children of God is to walk in the blessing. We are to be fruitful, we are to multiply, we are to replenish. That means to be a blessing. We are blessed to be a blessing. And subdue. You know, that's, that's a command to subdue. That means exercise authority over. And if we don't see ourselves as God sees us, If we do not see ourselves identified, we went through that last week, identified with Jesus, that what Jesus did, he did for us, we will never be able to exercise authority and dominion. Because we'll always be looking for something to do to get into the blessing. But God blessed them. What did Adam do to get blessed? Zero. Let me ask you another question. What did Abraham do to get blessed? Nothing. Nothing. God blessed him, said, go look, as far as you can see. He says, leave this land, but God blessed him. 
He says, you leave and this is what I'll do for you. He blessed him. He did nothing to earn it. And this is huge. Because faith is the law of change. And we're going to keep getting into that. And so let's look at, where did I say to go? Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 8. For by grace, favor, God's willingness to use his power on your behalf. Power beyond your ability. Glory to God. Brother Burke is going to be coming in October, and we've ordered some of his books. Grace, power beyond your ability. Made a big change in my life. I don't know how many years ago, but we were looking through some books, and Tammy looked at it, and it's so old that I don't want to use it too hard because the pages are so discolored. You cannot become saved, which means healed, delivered, become a child of God beyond God's grace, which is his ability to be used on your behalf. You cannot do anything to get yourself saved. You don't have the power. We've got to understand that because we think, well, yeah, I believed and I said and I'm saved and I'm a hero because I believed I said. True, you do believe because why? God sent someone to preach the gospel to you. It's not because you were living a clean life. You were born of Adam and had the sin nature in you. You were born of sin. You were conceived in sin. But Jesus came. Hallelujah. Because God loved us so much. He sent Jesus. But faith is the only way you can access that grace. We're going to look as we're studying this what faith is and how it accesses this grace. But faith, it says you're saved by grace through faith and that not of yourself, it's a gift of God. And people, I've heard them say, well, which one is the gift of God? Both, the faith and the grace. Because the faith came when you heard somebody preach the gospel and the gospel is the word of God. And it's the word of God that brought the faith. And God in his goodness brought somebody to preach the gospel to you. And when you heard that gospel, faith came. And then you believed that God raised Jesus from the dead and you said, Jesus is Lord. And beyond fast, you became a child of God. God's willingness to use his power on your behalf came into your spirit, gave you a new spirit. You are a species that never existed before. And you did nothing for it but hear the gospel. And we have to so understand this because then maybe we will get ourselves out of the way and let God be God. God is not holding out on us. How do you get healed? God's willingness to use his power on our behalf. And how do we access that? By faith. And how do we get faith? By hearing the word. Faith connects you to the grace. Or faith, you could say, connects you to the unlimited power of God. We've got to quit looking at ourselves. It says looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We've got to stop going through this checklist. I did this and 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 I did this. So I'm pretty good. So God should do something for me. Excuse me. He will do everything he said in his word he will do for one reason. Because of Jesus. And uh, we're going to look at those scriptures. And it's because you access that through faith, and the faith comes because of his word. Yes, you have to study his word. Yes, you have to get that word. But you don't make the word work. 
God said, I watch over my word to perform it. And the word doesn't work because we're so cute. Maybe because Pastor Dave is, but other than him, no. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, this is so freeing. It's so marvelous. It's so wonderful. So in, I'm going to read this out of the mirror. You don't have to go there. Second Corinthians 3.18 this is our identification. The mirror translation says, we're the blueprint of God's likeness displayed in human form. Every feature of his image is mirrored in us. Isn't that back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 28? Let's make man in our image and after our likeness. It's imaged. It's, the blueprint is in us. Why? How can we say that? Because we're born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed, which is the word of God. And God's DNA is in his word. Glory to God. And that's blueprint, whatever is in that DNA has been put in us. Glory to God. Glory to God. We might get at this sometime, but I'll just throw this out. It says that in, it just run, I'm just going to say this, and we, I don't know, we'll see where we go with it, but this is rather interesting. It says, as we go on, not of works lest any man should boast, but we're his workmanship, created for Christ Jesus into good works. That's chat, verse 10. What did God do? It says, in the beginning, God created. And God said, 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 and then it says he rested from all his work. What was his work? What did he do to work? Words. He said. He did not go out there with a shovel and a hoe. He said. And God said he rested from all his work. But all he did was say and say and say and say. People have said that the worlds were... Oh, I'm way ahead of this, but let's just keep going. The people say that the worlds were created out of nothing. That's a lie. They were created out of substance. Words, faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. God didn't see it down there. He saw dark, and he didn't go, Oh, Jesus, it's dark down there. He didn't do that. He said, and he didn't say, Let there be light. He didn't get permission from somebody. He said, Light be, and it was. Now, you might say, Well, God lied. Because when we say healing be, and it looks like we're sick, they go, oh, I can't lie. Hallelujah. We're his workmanship created unto good works. And what are those good works? We're to operate in faith, because without faith, it's impossible to please him. And it's faith that changes things. So faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We're to work the way God worked. Law of change. Faith. So let's continue here. Where were we? Oh yeah. We are to work that way. We are. Every feature of his image is mirrored in us. We look in the word to see our real self. Colossians 3.10 in the mirror says we stand fully identified in the new creation, renewed in knowledge according to the pattern of the exact image of Jesus, our creator. Hallelujah. We've got to get the image on the inside of us of who we are. You see, the greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So now, let's go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Glory to God. I wondered if I had enough notes this morning, but you know what? I'm still on halfway through the first page. Isn't this exciting? God is so good. Oh, it makes life so easy. It makes it so easy. Oh, 
Okay, the law, um, Romans chapter 8. You know, you can take any one of those scriptures and just preach on it, preach on it. Romans chapter 8, I'm going to read it out of the King James because you're more familiar with that, and then we will read it in the New Living Translation. Because I want to read it in the King James first because there's stuff in the King James that was not in the original, and you can put parentheses around it, you can cross it off, you can get rid of it. Because there's stuff in there that shouldn't be in there. Verse 8, uh, pardon me, chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Period. End. This rest of this stuff who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit is not in the original. There is no condition to this statement. The new, I believe the New American Standard doesn't have the condition in there. The New Living Translation doesn't. But there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And then they go because, I don't know, maybe they were scared to do that. Then they put on who walk after the Spirit, not after the blah, blah, blah. And then you get under condemnation. You go, well, I guess I'm not doing whatever I should be doing. It's a lie from the pit of hell. If you're in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. None. Jesus paid the price. He finished the work. New Living Translation, please. Is that it? There it is. See, it doesn't have all that other stuff. Cross it out of your Bible. Just get rid of it. It's not in the original. Don't be reading stuff you shouldn't be reading. Hallelujah. I am in Christ Jesus, and there is no condemnation, and I don't care what anybody says. The only way I will get under condemnation is if I allow the devil to put stuff in my head. I am so thankful for whom the Son makes free is free indeed. And how many have been made free by the Son? Well, if you're free, is there any condemnation? Hallelujah. I'm passionate about this. I'm so glad I'm free. So glad. So thankful I'm loved unconditionally. He loves me the way I am. Because I'm in Jesus. Hallelujah. Now verse 2. I'll read it out of the King James because you're familiar with that. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made, hath, past tense, made me free from the law of sin and death. What does New Living say, please? And because you belong to him, I read that and because, Arlene, you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you, Arlene, from the power of sin that leads to death. Because there's no condemnation, and I am free because of the power. What is that power? The grace. God's willingness to use his power on my behalf has freed me from the power of sin. Freed me from death. Hallelujah. It can have no hold on me. The law of faith makes a change. Because I believed uh, the word. Faith came. And faith changed me from being dead and of Adam's seed dead. My spirit, a stony heart. And in that faith caused the power of God to change me into his child. Oh, can you see this? I've got the image of God on the inside of me. The law of the spirit of life is the blessing. And you know what? I don't have to work for it. It's mine. Do you know why? 
Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Jesus became a curse for me. He bore it all so that I will have the blessing come on me. What did I do for it? Tell me, talk to me. What did I do for the blessing? Nothing. You see, I'm in Jesus. And, and that scripture that was read this morning about Deuteronomy, if you hearken diligent to the voice of the Lord your God and do all those things and obey him, the blessing shall come on you. Yes. What's my obedience? Jesus. He hearkened diligently to the voice of the Lord God. He did everything. And as long as I'm in him, I keep that. I don't have to deal with that. But Jesus said, I only do those things I hear my father say. So I only have to do what I hear my father say to do. Is that not correct? Come on. Whom the son makes free is free indeed. Hallelujah! I don't know why we want to keep putting ourselves back into bondage. And we sing, chains are broken. We sing, no more bondage. And then we go put, allow ourselves to get back into bondage. The law of blessing supersedes the law of the curse. Now, the thing is, the curse is here in the earth. It's here. It didn't say that Jesus got rid of the curse. It says he redeemed me from it. Is there still poverty, sickness, disease, etc., etc., in the earth? Wars, yes. It's here in the earth. But the law of faith, which is the law of the blessing, in the blessing, by grace, in God's power, beyond my ability, supersedes that curse. The same as, is there gravity in the earth? There is. However, you get into an airplane and you do what you need to do, the law of lift supersedes the law of gravity and it will fly. Is gravity still there? Just cut the engines and you'll soon find out. You'll find out real quick that the law of gravity is still there. It's a law. And the curse is still here. It's a law. It's there because of Adam. It's here. But the law of the blessing is, supersedes that. Just don't cut the engines on it. How do you cut the engines on the law of the blessing? Not using your faith. Because it's faith that accesses grace, which is the power of God beyond our ability. His willingness to use that power on our behalf. The minute you get into works thinking you can do it, you're no longer operating in faith. You're operating in faith in your works, and now you're traveling in the curse. You've cut the engine's to the blessing. Do you understand this? Is this making sense to, to you all? Like, Because we can run it around a different way to get there. Because this is huge. <clears throat> We're the deciding factor. God doesn't just make us do something. And this is where people go, I don't know why God just doesn't. He's done everything he's going to do until Adam's lease runs out. He's given us dominion and authority. He doesn't force us to do anything. He's given us his word, which builds faith that we can walk in this. He says, I've given you grace. In, in the Romans, what is it about chapter 5? <clears throat> it says that we're to receive the abundance of grace... We're to receive God's abundant willingness to use his power on our behalf. And we're to receive the gift of righteousness. If we don't know that we're righteous before God, we will never be able to move on. 
It says in chapter 8, <clears throat> there is no condemnation. We have got to get to the place <clears throat> where we clean our heart out and get rid of the condemnation. And in this study, we're going to get there and see how to do it and what puts condemnation in and what to do to get it out. We're going to look at those things. So now Romans, I mean John, let's go to 1 John. 1 John. These are laws, principles. The law of the blessing has freed us from the law of the curse. There is therefore now no condemnation. You're free from condemnation. So if we go look at 1 John chapter 3, 1 John chapter 3, well, let's look at 19. 1 John 3, 19. I'll read it of the King James, then we're going to look at the New Living. 19, and hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts. Now we're talking about the no condemnation, our hearts. Verse 20, for if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. See, our heart can condemn us if we allow that in. But the word says there's no condemnation. Now it's as if our heart condemns us. What happens? When we walk in condemnation, thinking we haven't done enough, good enough, should have, could have, would have, if our heart condemns us not, then we have confidence towards God. If we allow condemnation in our heart, we will not have confidence towards God. And it says later around 13 that when we have confidence in God, we can ask according to his will and then we know he hears us and then we know we have the petitions that we've asked of him. But if there's any type of condemnation in our heart, we will not have confidence and assurance towards God and then we will not be in faith and we will not receive what we ask. So, beloved, if our heart condemn us not, we have confidence towards God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And his commandments, what are they? Verse 23, it doesn't tell us we can't eat wieners. I wouldn't recommend it. They don't pass these lips, but, you know, some people think they should. But, hey, we'll pray for them get them delivered anyway and this is his commandment one number one that we believe on the name the authority name means authority and character of his son Jesus if we don't believe in Jesus's authority and his character we won't be able to walk in what God's told us to do. So he's saying, if you want to have your prayers answered, if you want to walk without condemnation, believe in his son Jesus. Believe in his authority. Believe that Jesus conquered sin, hell, death, and the grave for you. That he did it for you. And that he has now, when Jesus said, all authority has been given unto me in heaven and earth, now you go, we know. We have faith in that authority. We know that Jesus defeated Satan for us, and therefore there can be no condemnation. That's what it means, believing on his son Jesus. When we say, in order to get born again, we say, Jesus, you are Lord. Then we make him our Lord, but we believe you're Lord. Well, what is that saying? We believe in his authority, that he defeated hell, sin, the grave, the whole works. It's not hard. It's not hard. And the next one is, and love one another, as he gave commandment. Now, that gets a little tricky. When we do not realize the price paid for us, when we start to walk in works, and we always think what we're doing is right. 
then we start comparing ourselves, and then when somebody hurts us, it's hard to love them. But when we realize that Jesus paid that price for them as well as for me, that God loved me before I ever knew him, that love means I am willing to look at that person as made in the image of God. I'm willing to look at that person the way God looked at me through the eyes of love, through the blood of Jesus. As we've said before, you don't have to like them and you definitely don't have to approve of what they're doing. But the same blood was shed for all of us. When we start to realize that, the love walk gets a lot easier because we can dismiss ourselves from the emotional feeling of it because that's not what it was. The love of God is not an emotion. It's a power. God is love. God is love. And the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. And I'm in Jesus, so I am encapsulated in love. My nature is love. The minute I step out of love, I've gone against my nature. Because I have a new nature. That's why when we step out of love, and if we're not forgiving or whatever, the minute we step out, we get that all kinds of things happening, and then you can get into condemnation. Because you've stepped out of your nature, your new nature, created in Christ Jesus, in righteousness and holiness, and you've stepped back into that old Adamic nature. You can't sow mingled seed. There can't be a mixture. Glory to God. When we feel condemned or guilty, we lose confidence before God and it stops our faith. And when our faith stops, we cannot access the grace. The minute we become critical, it stops our faith. And I don't know about you. Well, yes, I do know about you. We all need God's willingness. We need grace. We need his power to help us today. We need his power to put us over. We need his healing power flooding through our body. We need it. It stops when faith stops. <coughs> Pardon me. When faith stops, you're no longer accessing the grace. And now you can see why faith is the law of change. Nothing will change in our life without faith. Now remember, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. If I say, well, I just missed it, and I'm so dumb, and I'm so stupid, and I can't do this, and I never was any good at that subject anyway, I have stepped out of faith into condemnation and I have stopped the power of God from working in my life. Immediately. Immediately it stopped. And we need God's willingness. Well, I shouldn't say his willingness. He's willing. It's there for us. His power is for us. We just access it by faith. We get the word of God and say, I have the mind of Christ. I can do all things through the anointing. And whatever he's called me to do, I can do. It doesn't matter what. I can do it. I have now released my faith in the grace, which is God's power, and he will change things around. 
to line up with what he said. Well, glory to God. I'm going to do one more scripture. I, I just feel this is important to do this one more. Would, should we just spend Father's Day here and just go until next week, maybe? And go past Father's Day? No, I won't do that to y'all. But 2 Corinthians chapter 1, <clears throat> verse 20. 2 Corinthians 1, 20. I want you to see this. This is so exciting. That book of Dennis, Brother Dennis Burke. And, oh, what was the other one? Maybe it was Intimacy with God. So many years ago, changed my life. And then I got into a whole bunch of other religious kind of teaching and thought, well, maybe, whatever. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. But this is true. This changed my life. God's undeserved love, loving me just the way I am, unconditional, loving me so much he sent Jesus. He saw me so valuable, he sent the best he had. Don't ever think you're not good enough. You might, okay, you know, don't waste your life messing around out in that world, getting contaminated, thinking that's going to fill your need. The only thing that's going to meet your need is the love of God. It's the only thing that will add value to your life. Nothing else. Nothing else. You don't need people to add value to your life. You're here to add value to their life. If people don't want to add value to your life or take it away, that's their prerogative. It's their privilege. You love them. But you're here to be a blessing. And God will see to it that whatever you need, he will bring to you all the time. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. For all... Well, I'm just going to read part of 19. So the promises, it says, they were preached in Jesus, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. Meaning God doesn't say sometimes and not for you, but for you. No. And then verse 20, it says, for all. Everybody say all. 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 Any out of anything after all, is there anything left over? So all the promises of God are in him, yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Everything is in Jesus. Every promise is yea. Would we, could you put that up in, in the um, New Living, please? For all of God's promises have been what? What? Is there any promise outstanding? In who? And we are in him. So all of the promises have been fulfilled in Christ. They're in us. With a resounding yes. And through Christ our amen, which means yes, ascends to God for his glory. The mirror translation says, In him the detail of every promise of God is fulfilled. Jesus is God's yes to your total well-being. In our union with him, the amen echoes in us, gives evidence to his glorious intent through us. <clears throat> Every single promise. And it says that the saints in the Old Testament looked for it. Were fulfilled in Jesus. He paid the price. For every promise, nothing outstanding, paid in full, and I'm in him. Every promise, I've been born again of incorruptible seed, I have it. And I access it by faith to his grace. I access his power by faith. And it changes my circumstances. 
I'm not looking to God to change anything because Jesus paid the price and it's been done. And I apply my faith, the blessing, and I apply it and I start to flow on the blessing. And I supersede the curse because all of his promises in the blessing are yea and amen through Jesus. Glory to God. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Every promise fulfilled. And I access it by faith to his grace. And his power works on my behalf to heal my body, to do whatever I need to do that I can't do on my own. That is the good news. I heard Kenneth Copeland saying the good news, or... Can, I think, well, anyway, but he said the good news is that Jesus bore everything and God looks at us just as if we never sinned. Justified. And I think he, it, well, I heard somebody, one of somebody say, the good news, it's just too good to be true news. It's just too good to be true. Hallelujah. Please stand. Glory to God.